we are talking about the um, high number of unwanted robocalls that are coming across the country and especially here in Texas. Tell us about that. Yeah, so Texas actually ranks number two in the country in in the number of uh, robocalls. We've seen about 130 million unwanted calls uh, to date. Dallas, unfortunately, ranks number one in the in the state of Texas, uh, uh, bringing in about 30 percent of those unwanted calls. Uh, roughly about 38, 39 uh, million um, unwanted calls. Would now I see now California and Texas? Would California and Texas? Would that be because of the size of the state, or is there any some other reason why we're getting so many? I think I think it, it's a couple reasons. You know, one is is the size of the state and the, and the number of uh, number of number of people that live there. Um, although interesting, you know, kind of New York is 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 number is, is number three. Uh, um, I think the other thing is is that it you know typically the bad actors are going to go where you know wherever they can find the money. It's kind of like you know Sutton's law. You know, when they ask Willie Sutton why does he why did he rob banks, it's that's where the money is. So. You know, I think that's that's you know kind of a combination of you know size and and, and opportunity. Okay, and I, I I did an interview similar to this just a couple of weeks ago where um, it was uh, the, the phishing with the emails uh, where the are targeting COVID scams now, and you said that's the same th same thing that they're doing with the robocalls. Yeah, absolutely. With so side, they're they're doing the exact same thing. In fact, well, you know, there's robo texts that we see that are that are tied to COVID. One of the more recent ones that we've seen is around contact tr tracing with COVID. Uh, you know, we know that the you know the states and the and the local governments are trying to determine you know where, you know, where the outbreaks are coming from. You know, where the outbreaks are coming from, and 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 to be able to do contact tracing. So those are legitimate calls. Um, you know that are that are being made, and they'll typically only ask for uh, your name and, and potentially a date of birth to you know verify who you are. But with the con with the contact tracing scams that we've seen, it's the, that they're telling somebody that you've been around has been infected. Uh, you know, in the next 24 to 72 hours, you're going to need to comply and and take a test. Um, it's going to cost fifty dollars. Here's the you know please please give me your uh, credit card information so that I can. I can send you the test. If you don't comply, you know, you're, you're, you know, there, you know, there could be a potential lawsuit against you. So they, again, try to be threatening and they're trying to get your, your personal information. What these bad actors do is, is they're like con men. They, they take whatever's topical and, 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 and try to twist it into um, making it sound like it, you know, like it's a, you know, a legitimate call um, again to defraud you and, and, and get personal information. How many people are taking the bait and getting, you know, getting their money stolen? Yeah, so we've seen, you know, over 125,000 have, have been reported to the FCC, about 70 million in in losses, um, and that's just the ones, and that's just the ones that that have realized that they've actually been, you know, scammed by, uh, you know, a, a bad actor. You know, that number could be uh, much bigger because they're unaware that that they were actually they were actually scammed. So. Um, a lot of money. Oh, wow. and, yeah, I mean, a lot of money there. And, and, and you know, unfortunately, um, you know, it, 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 it's happening and they're taking advantage of people, um, you know, with legitimate sounding scams. 126,000 in what time frame? Oh, that's the first half of the year. So that. Really, oh. Yeah. So that wow. really start. And, and when you think about it, you know, the COVID scams, we really didn't see until March. So. You know, for a three-month period, that's that's a lot of money. Wow! How can we guard against it? Yeah. So, you know, one of the things that I think you should do is is not answer a call if if, if you don't know who who's calling you. Uh, you know, legitimate enterprises or legitimate people leave mail, um, and you know you can you can then you know call them back. Uh, you know, I th that's that's you know that's certainly you know one good way to do that. Um, also, you know, there's robocall apps that are provided by your carrier that it'll provide, you know, warnings of potential spam or potential fraud, potential spam or potential fraud uh, before the call, you know, before the call comes into the into the handset. Um, you know, so so I think, you know, I think those are those are two good things. I think, you know, educating, you know, your your listeners on what the latest scams are, the FT, the FCC. 
uh, has the website at TN.com. We have, um, you know, what, what the latest scams are. So, you know, again, education, making sure that your, uh, you know, that your parents, um, you know, seniors are certainly, uh, you know, uh, are, are subject to, uh, you know, subject to, uh, uh, you know, the scams, scams as well, scams as well. You know, we know that, you know, seniors receive at least one robocall a week where, you know, more than, more than half, almost 60% receive at least seven robocalls a week. So, you know, educate your, educate your parents on, on, you know, what these, what these bad actors are up to, because again, they sound very legitimate. To actually calling that number back, can the number be traced or, I don't know, ported or anything that, would um, put a person at risk to actually call back and verify that number. No, I don't think I don't think there's there's any harm in, in, in that at all um, in, in calling the number calling the number back. Um, there is a there is a uh, a, a different type of scam called a Wangiri scam. It's one ring. Basically, uh, you know, they're calling from typically the Caribbean, uh, and you know, hoping that you call them back, and then long distance charges will will apply. So, um, you know. I don't think there's there, so there so there would be potential harm in the potential harm in that. Um, again, I think that if 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 a legitimate uh, business is going to leave a leave a voicemail, tell you you know why they're trying to get a hold of you and and et cetera, uh, I you know I wouldn't necessarily call the number back. I, I so I don't think there would be a harm from a trace back perspective. But but um, you know again you don't want to if, if, if it's a legitimate call, they'll leave a voicemail, they'll leave how to get back in, in, in touch with them. So, so, um, you know, while there, there may be some, there, there may be some harm in that manner. Um, I, you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily, I wouldn't necessarily call back an unknown number. Okay. And what about kids who now have cell phones? Are you getting the reports of, you know, children getting these kinds of calls? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, one of the, one of the other bigger scams is around student loan forgiveness. Um, you know, student is, is over a trillion dollars. Uh, and, and so now they're using the COVID scam to say, Hey, we're, we're, um, uh, uh, you know, we're going to be able to give you, you know, a, a discount on your, uh, on your interest rate. Well, you know, that's not necessarily true. So they're going to try to get that, that personal information. Um, but kids, but kids, yeah, kids are definitely susceptible to it. You know, when we look at it, it, it who's been scammed, um, you know, typically uh, seniors are typically scammed at a lower rate, but for a much higher dollar amount. Uh, the younger, younger generation is typically uh, impacted much more frequently, but at a much, much lower dollar amount. So uh, unfortunately, you know, the bad actors is, is really more dialing for dollars and, and you know, Whoever they can scam um, uh, and, and defraud, uh, you know they, they they will. So again, you know, educate your, you know, so I guess you know, educate your children as well to not necessarily, you know, take a call from from an unknown number. How are they getting the number? Is this just a random, randomized uh, type of situation where they get the numbers and are calling? Yeah, yeah. I think they're again. I think they're dialing for dialing for dollars, if you will. Um, you know, I think that that. There's also, you know, the dark, you know, has numbers. I, I think that there's, mm -hmm. there, I think that there's bad actors that dial numbers randomly um, and try to find out who picks up. Uh, we've seen one scam. It's it's called a prayer request scam. Uh, that they say, you know, press one if you want, you know, you want us to pray for you. Pray, press three if if you want to be uh, removed from our list. Really, what they're trying to do is understand. Uh, is this a is this a viable uh, working number? And and I think that they're 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 using that to uh, you know sell that on the uh, on the dark web to uh, you know others that this is a legitimate number. So again, um, um, you know, not a good reason to uh, or another good reason why you wouldn't want to necessarily you know pick up on a call um, because okay. harvesting those type numbers. Okay. Anything you want to add? No, no. Uh, again, you know, I appreciate the appreciate the. Appreciate the time. If, if somebody thinks that they have been, um, um, you know, defrauded, I would say work with your local local law enforcement authorities and, and you know help them get involved in 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 what to do. Okay. Thank you. So